15 or 16,000 feet, I could see how these mountains would easily snag an airplane, especially since those planes were not equipped with radar. Finally, after I was about to lose all faith and confidence in Prem, we reached the crash site. It was spread out over the side of a hill and appeared to be the remains of a four-engine aircraft. We spent several hours examining the site, photographing parts, and trying to determine the model number and serial number of the aircraft. There were numerous human bones, femurs, uh, arm bones, and such. There was remains of leather jackets, leather flight gloves, and a couple different boot sizes to be found on the surface. The plane hit with a lot of impact. Perhaps it had spun in on your vertical descent as there was a lot of debris deep in the rocks, sometimes three, four foot down from the surface. This was definitely a very remote crash site. There's no way anyone could have just stumbled on it by accident. And also, if the pilots or crew member had survived the crash, I don't see any way they could have wandered out of here and survived. It's just way too remote. I'm showing here holding human bones in my right hand in the remains of leather boots and flight gloves in my left hand. After I identified the aircraft, it turned out that five men died in this crash. Snow was already beginning to fall to higher altitudes and we were a bit concerned if we were going to get to our final location before it was buried under snow. I got across this bridge before anybody else. The other porters decided to go through the river, but this one decided to try to follow me across. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to keep his balance correct because of the We quickly gained altitude and it became quite, quite cold and windy. We had to stop frequently to brew tea. In short order, we were in snow country. We had several more days of climbing through steep snow-covered mountains to reach our site. These mountains were all in the 15 to 16,000 foot range and were very steep. The snow was already thigh deep in most locations. We were not equipped with ice axes or crampons, so we had to very carefully kick steps up these steep slopes. The mountains in this area are probably concealing the remains of many other missing American aircraft. We finally reached the wreckage that my Tibetan guide had told me about. The aircraft wing number was plainly readable on the upper and lower side of the wing. It appeared that the aircraft had impacted the headwall on the lower side of the lake and then slid down the headwall, landing on the shore of the lake. The entire plane was on dry ground and none of it was submerged under the water. Upon researching the wing number, I was able to determine from government records that three U.S. airmen died in this crash. I found the carburetor from one of the engines. The throttle plates were stuck in the wide open position. This might mean that the plane had encountered severe icing of the carburetors or of the wings and was unable to maintain sufficient power to clear the mountains in the area. After recording aircraft serial numbers and taking a GPS reading on the crash site, it was time to head back to our high camp. It would be about six hours of hard trekking through snow to finally reach our camp.